Yeah, I, look, I'm not saying you shouldn't be concerned with, with playing properly and playing in tune and all of that. Of course we are. But being obsessed by it to the extent that you lose sight of, of what the musical phrase is that you're actually playing, I don't think that's going to appeal to anybody. Uh, certainly not to a, a concert audience and, and not to a, a panel of your fellow musicians. So, yes, you, you, know, you want to play well, but you want to say something, too. Uh, I wanted to ask you um, about uh, your recording of Bach suites, because uh, you know, we all listen to it so many times, and I have it on my computer, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to ask you, how was that experience of <coughs> recording such an important and big um, cello, cello pieces? And uh, how was your preparation? How did you prepare for that? Another good question. Well, I'll say first that, that in my recording career, it's maybe my proudest moment. I loved the process. And the way I prepared was in the, I think it was 10 days before, I did the cycle of suites in London. And I can't actually remember where, I, I know I did it in Australia too, but that was a few months before. But I, I did the cycle a few times so that just physically I was ready to do it. And then the next question was going to be, how do you actually record it? Those are, of course, huge pieces and it's just yourself. And I spoke to some colleagues of mine who made recordings of Bach and I got all kinds of advice. You know, most of them said, oh, well, record the difficult movements first. You know, sort of do the, the jigs and, and the courants and, and whatever, and, and, and be sure you give yourself plenty of time in between and, and whatever. And the more I thought about it, I thought, but there's going to be something, for me anyway, personally, there's going to be something missing. So I just made up my mind, having taken all the advice, I made up my own mind, and I decided what I was going to do, since it was only myself and the producer and, and a sound man. I mean, there were three of us there in Bristol. I was going to perform every suite, absolutely in its entirety, with every repeat, just like I had done in London 10 days earlier. And when I said it to the producer, he said, well, if that's what you want to do. You know, I, and I could hear underneath his saying, you're crazy. But if that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. And it felt so good. I mean, so I sat down and I played the entire first suite, all repeats and everything. And then at the end, you know, there were some things that he wanted to cover. And so, you know, we covered them. But I felt good because, as you know, in a performance, the timing, what you do between movements is also an important part of how you feel this whole suite unfolds. And so the timings weren't an artificial timing of the producer later on thinking, I think we need to add a second here, or a second and a half between this movement and that movement. It was the timing I felt with my breathing and, and my feeling for the, for the suite. And the interesting thing is, at the end of the whole process, we did it in three days, and at the end of the whole process, when he did the editing, he told me that every suite he used the full take and only made, you know, a few, obviously, minor corrections. But so all the timings of each suite is absolutely as I felt it, at least at that time. You know, if I were to record them now, because that was already 20 years ago, I'm sure I would have, you know, certain variations. I know uh, Janos Starker, the, you know, the great Hungarian cellist who sadly just passed away, he recorded the suites, I believe, five times. And not that I've sat down and listened to all five, but I'm sure that there are, there are differences in those timings in, in each set because we, we do change. <laughs> 